This is a review and spoiler cast for John Wick Chapter 4. This will be a Patreon exclusive for, I'm not sure, maybe three days, maybe four or five, but it's going to be a Patreon exclusive for a few days, you know, for people who subscribe to the, uh, to that $10 tier. Um, it's good. So that tier is going to be a, a movie spoiler cast and review tier and for game spoiler cast. Whenever I get around to doing a spoiler cast, I guess for Resident Evil 4, even though that's going to be. Are you recording right now? Yeah, I'm recording right now. Yeah. Ew, uh, don't do your streamer I'll, voice with me. <laughs> streamer uh, voice is how I really talk. This is my real? Thing? I, I'm thinking he's talking to us. This nigga's talking about, yeah, so what, what we're going to do? Nah. All bro. right, so we're starting. Hey, you I'm better loosen the up people. your shoulders, bro. What the? I'm telling the people about the tears. Anyway, so yeah, go subscribe to the $10 tier. Because, uh, you know, After Dark and all that other stuff is included in there anyway. So you get an After Dark, you get in the spoiler cast, all that good stuff. So we're going to be talking about John Wick, Chapter 4. Um, Let's start it off like this. Just give overall, you know, impressions and your feelings about about the movie. Um, oh, I ain't even do introductions. I got the movie guys with me, Alex, Wonton, and uh, Tarek. So Chew. I'm gonna start off with Chew. Alex. What's your, uh, what's your what's what's your impressions about this man? First impressions. This got to be the best action flick I've seen. Ooh. Since John Wick three, <laughs> yeah, that, that's my first impression. <laughs> without, without getting into the convo too much, you didn't see Top Gun. Ugh, does, does that an action pick? Yeah. Top Gun's fire. Yeah, Top Gun is a rom com. I'm. I know. I, I didn't see. Yeah. I didn't Shut up. <laughs> what are you talking about? Oh my God. All right. What about you, Wanton? Um, amazing movie. I guess overall, what I would like to say about this movie. It uh, exceeded my expectations. Like, when I went into it, I was, I'm not going to lie, I was expecting this more the same, more John Wick. But I feel like they went above and beyond, personally. Um, this is the best John Wick movie out of the four. Uh, it's, it's better than the first one to me. Facts. The first one, I would put the first one second at this point. But uh, yeah, definitely a great movie. I gave it a 9 Wait, out of 10. Wait, why? I guess we'll get into it. My bad, my bad. We'll get into it. Yeah. And uh, you, Tarek? Um, yeah, like Wonton said, I was going into it with kind of so-so expectations. Like, I saw the reviews before. People were giving it 10s out of 10s. And like, I'm sure they're, like, capping for that. But I saw the movie. It's probably the best action movie I've seen since Terminator 2. Mm. Oh, my Damn. God. Here we Terminator go with this argument. Two. He yeah, went to the crazy. 90s. Well, Terminator 2 came out. That was the 90s, right? Or was that the... Yeah, yeah that, that was, was, okay. yeah, was 90, yeah. Okay. Uh, Jersey came out in 1990, nigga. That was like 1998 and 1996. Mm, well, I just said 90s. Out? I can't remember. Um, yeah, it, it, it was some. Yeah, it was early 90s. But like, here's what I gotta ask y'all, right? Here's what I need an explanation for. And I don't. I love the John Wick movies because I'm not gonna say they're completely mindless action shoot 'em up, bang bang movies. They are. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Okay, but okay, why does John Wick get a pass when there's so many other like brainless shoot 'em up movies, but John Wick gets like 90s and on Rotten Tomatoes and 10 out of 10s and everybody loves it and, and nobody calls it like stupid. Be, be, because I'm just trying to understand the difference. It doesn't take itself seriously. I think they know what they're doing and they're not trying to make themselves bigger than they are. And everything they do, like they find terror, like the choreography. All the movies have mm -hmm. great choreography, they have great. Yeah. Uh, like yeah. atmosphere, background. They're not trying to be like Jason Bourne. They're not. They know they're not that. They they know what they're trying to do and they execute it every time. It's not like gonna win any Academy Awards, but it's gonna like be at the top of his genre. Which I think that's what the genre needed. Like it needs something like this. Like this was like we'll get into it in later. But I just feel like everything they did in the first three movies, they're like let's take everything we did and turn it up to ten, and that's what they did. Mm. You know what? To add on to what Tyrek said, not only do they know what they're doing and they're being on not honest, but they they kind of put it on their sleeve of we're just an action movie. We're not trying too hard to be anything more. They do it stylized. If it wasn't stylized, we would just think this is a kung fu hustle or like just some it man where it's like, yeah, they're fighting the whole movie. But I guess if you like fight scenes, the way they do it from the video game influences, the comic book influences, the way they the way they package it is what makes John Wick John Wick. You feel mm -hmm. me? Okay. They're having fun with it. You see that they're having fun yes. with the movie. 
And I feel like yeah. you could tell with other action movies, they're like phoning it in. And they're like, okay, here's this one fight scene. Let's have some dialogue. Have another fight scene, some dialogue. And this is like, no, bro, we're going 100% full octane with this shit. We don't care. We're going straight into it. And I feel like other movies don't do not do that. Quick question. One time, why do you, why do you put John Wick 1 up so high? Under John Wick 4? You don't? I have one uh, after four. I have I, one after I'd four. like to know your. I'd like to know your explanation. Okay, 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 okay. Because I mean, it I mean, was first, cool. It was a good introduction to the world. But my nigga, let me tell you under why. four. Yeah, go ahead. I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna give you my ranking first. I'm all so, ears. So for me, four is the best one. Then it's John Wick one. Then it's John Wick two, and then it's three last. You I got agree. three left. Now, now I agree. Look, let me cut. Three is not a bad movie. I, it's cool. It's a cool movie. It's cool, John Wick. But out of the other movies, it is the weakest one, in my opinion. Um, the reason I have one second is because one, I think, had the best mixture of um, story and action. Because that story, that first one, is pretty far. Like him coming out of retirement. Um, the, the the lengths that he goes because of what they did to his dog and Baba Yaga. Uh, the whole symbolism with him and his him losing his wife. Um that that first movie is really good and it's 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 not like a typical brain dead action movie. It actually it does have a pretty good story to it. Uh, so that's why I put number one so high. And then two, I think two uh, like aside from four, two has the best action in it. It has the best action. That scene when they open the fucking um bounty on him and every you see everybody like all the sleeper agents starting to go after him. That shit is fire. That's that shit. You see what you just brought up? You see how they did that in the fourth movie too, and they turned yeah, it up they a did. notch. They're like, bro, we're gonna make this even better. That's what I'm trying to say. Like, they took all the best parts of the previous three movies. I was like, yo, let's take the best three parts, and let's just turn up the ten, and you let's see what? if we can make Bam. a movie out of that. And they you they know, just succeeded. But you, but. You don't feel like John Wick 3 had more flair than John Wick 1 and 2? With the colors, the action, the but weapon choice, which, which the one actual was, enemy? Uh, which one was, okay, so which one was the pencil? That was 3, right? The three? pencil? No. The, or that was 2? No, that, was, that was 2. See, no, see, the first time he used the pencil, he used it in 1, but he did use it in 1. He used it in 1. The he used it in 1, and, and the, the Russian guy told him, oh, yeah, yeah he killed three people with a pencil. Yeah. And See, here's, here's the he thing. He did it again. Yeah. I, mm. I remember, I don't remember that much about 3. I, it's, and it's weird because I remember more about 2, even though 3 is more recent. I remember and, 2, yeah. you know, because that was the one with um Common and the, the silent assassin scene walking to the right. train yeah. station, right? That was fire. I remember that. Yeah, well, I remember, I really, obviously, I parts of 1, but... Three? I don't know. I, I obviously, I three, remember Halle Berry and Halle Berry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> three was the one where people were like, why are you guys like, okay, this is kind of getting a little stale. And I think that's why people were like, why are you making a fourth one? But y'all, but y'all, hold on, hold on, hold on. You didn't think John, okay, to me, John Wick 3 is SmackDown versus Raw 2007, and John Wick 1 is SmackDown versus Raw. <clears throat> It was a good introduction to a new way to play wrestling games, but when it got to 2007, the grappling system was better, the the uh, customization. I don't play wrestling games now, but I know when 2007 came out, we went, they perfected SmackDown versus Raw. And then they had the other ones after that. But John Wick 3, it made it on a grander scale. Like, he, the whole hotel was after this. Like, to me... That was the, hard. The, whole, the hotel to, part was To cool. me... Because I spoke about this in Home Base. John Wick 3, to me, is where he um, exercised that dead point accuracy. Because remember, they introduced the full body armor, where literally you had to get under the neck to kill him. That from head to toe, they was covered. He literally was like, oh, well, okay, bet. Bop! He was lifting niggas' helmets up. Bop, bop, that's fine! What? And then, and then the point, John Wick 3 started off with the visceral nature. Do y'all remember the museum scene where the dude was like uh, trying to reach for the gun he was crying and then john wick and he's blurry in the background he's like nigga throw an axe at that nigga head mm. come on bro john wick three to me they up the ante on the on the killing the john wick actually felt he didn't seem invincible you see what i'm saying like that nigga was getting beat up sliced cut shot at to where it you felt you felt like oh well if this is the end of the movie I get it this nigga's kind of getting toe up this movie 
Like it wouldn't he lost a finger. Like, bro. I'm a I'm gonna have to agree with them. Like they're all amazing to me, but three is probably I'm put, probably putting three, three bro. Last three is place. heat. It's just wow. out, of three, all, out of the other ones, it's the weakest one. Three, three, three is the, what? three's the Uncharted three of that series. How dare you? Who is uh, it, who is the milk? It's not bad. It's, it, it's not. It's not. It's not bad. It's just that if you could take all three, leave four out of this. If you take the first three movies, and I think if you compare them, I think most people are gonna put one like one at the top just because it was new at the time, started, 2014. Yeah. It started off. It's kind of hard to like beat that. And then two was a little more of the same. And I think three people got that sequelitis. And they're like, okay, oh, hey, I get so, it. Another so, John Wick movie. John Wick, um, it, four got delayed. What was it? Twice? Wasn't it twice? Because it, yeah. it was supposed to come yeah. out during the pandemic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that was the COVID. And they had to redo reshoots. The, the third movie oh, yeah. came out in 2019. So. Yeah. yeah. I got a question. I got a question. Who was the guy that uh, passed away just recently? The Lance, Lawrence Lawrence Reddick. Lawrence Reddick. Okay. Lawrence Reddick. That was Lance. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's, um, yeah. Rest in peace to him. Y'all didn't, y'all didn't fall in love with his character in John Wick Three. When did y'all like him? Like to me, John Wick Three is when I said I really like him. Like I really like the, the, the movie. Yeah, that's I, when they expanded his character. The the movie I really liked it was when something was happening, right? And so John, they went to the to the hotel, and he, John was like tr trying to kill somebody, or somebody was trying to kill him. And but, they stopped when they got in. Yeah, they stopped him because because you can't do it on hotel grounds. <laughs> I was you know like, okay, he a boss. That was I'll two. Say, I'll say, no, that was three. Well, they did it again in three. They literally, the fight happened in the Continental. That was the big issue because it's like, you're not supposed to fight in here and they broke mm -hmm. the rule. I, maybe, maybe I'm biased because John Wick 3 was the first time I watched one in totality. And then I went back and watched one and two. So maybe oh, I'm biased. That, so maybe that's probably why you like it because you watch, that's the thing. I feel like you watched John Wick 1 first. No, nah, that was gonna stick with you. And if, with me, I watched it first, and that's the only one I watched in theaters. See. The other two I watched at home. See, that's the thing. What, yeah. Go see when I saw John Wick three. That was my introduction to the hotel. John Wick is a character, so to me, that was when I got the big sense of the world. Like, oh, it's an entire world that operates on a code of gold coins and you have home bases where you yeah. can't no business, no contracts. It doesn't mm -hmm. matter the the ranking. So to me, that was where I was introduced to all of it. So maybe maybe that's why I'm biased because the world building was, is I very good. Uh, yeah, I, I that, seen though. nothing like yeah. that. I loved it. I like, loved just, it. Yeah, for just, for action movie, that's pretty good. Like, yeah, it was they like, actually, yeah, it was like remember Wanted where they had like a code and mm -hmm. through centuries of man, we've always had this lineage of assassins. This is what I wanted. Wanted wanted to branch out into if they made a sequel to Wanted. This is what I wanted, like yeah. an actual ecosystem of assassins. I think that is so fire, yeah, bro. Yeah, I really like just the rules and, and the code and the ethics. Like, th thinking about that, thinking about, like, assassins having that is kind of crazy. Like, we mm -hmm. brutally kill people, but we have a code. Like, you could you could literally be sitting next to somebody that you want to kill, or like, mm -hmm. you've been hired to kill, but because of rules, you may not. You could just have a regular conversation with them, and they're like, that's, that's kind of crazy. Um, just, just real quick, because I wanted to, like, set up four, because, like I said, Three, three happened four years ago, and mm. I, the ending of that movie was kind of a blur to me. He killed somebody very important, and then that set up four. But I can't remember who was that person. It was some some important person at the table. One, of, one of the chairs. Yeah, one of the people. One of the oh, chairs. Okay. If you yeah. remember, that's when they was in remember, the desert, right? <clears throat> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, if you remember, um, he kind of did two things. John Wick two. Uh, what was that dude's name? Santino. Um, he had the marker. He gave John the contract to kill his sister. That was the whole point of the, uh, the second yeah. movie. John did it, and then he ended up uh, killing uh, Santino. But he shot him in the hotel. Remember that? He, he shot him in the head in the hotel. So that's when he became excommunicado. They put the bounty on his head. Um, then in three, when they trying to kill John, um, he meets up with that dude in the desert and I'm, I'm not gonna lie all these movies kind of gelling together i can't remember the elder, he the elder. yeah because he had to he had to give his ring finger yeah yeah he cut his finger off that's right that's right in order in order to get his pardon to have a contract to get right right wasn't that to get unexcommunicado to get back into the system of things yeah all right okay because that that ex that that reminds me that's why he started john wick four in the desert because that nigga already out there yeah. Yeah, yeah right. so, and that's when he killed the, he killed the elder, and that's when everything went to shit. 
So the marquee, who was played by Bill Skarsgård, um, mm -hmm. now because you know John is breaking all these rules and the hotel is also that's why he comes and starts to like you know he wants John dead because he's trying to clean shit up. He, yeah, he the yeah, hotel. exactly. He the face for the uh, for the table, basically, exactly. like the the disciplinary. Exactly. I hate that nigga eyeballs. By the way, ain't he the one from, <laughs> from it? Yeah, he plays yeah. it. Yeah, he does no matter, like Pennywise. Damn, yeah, no matter where he is on the camera, one of them eyeballs like this. Mm -hmm. I was like, bro, what is he looking like? I hated his eyes the whole movie, fam. So I'm so fired. Yeah, I also want to ask okay, y'all ask y'all about these these so these Kevlar suits that okay like okay are we I, are we suspending like a hundred percent like practicality and and belief because okay no, there's the, suits right but and they're Kevlar. There's a the video but, on that. But okay, he's like okay when he's getting shot at, for example, he's like lifting up his arm, you know, so the suit protects yeah. him. But he covers his head. And and there was a scene where he also took off his suit, suit and like the bullets were shaking off of it. But I'm like, mm -hmm. no, like there, there's well, it, it I, can't I think that was stop all inner, these bullets, right? I think that was from inner like this either inner shell fibers. that he shot himself that get in his shirt and stuff like that. Like he's not holding casings on his jacket, if that's what you mean. No, I watched the video of some guy. I don't know if y'all know this Kyle Hill dude. He looks like Thor. He has a science channel. So they did something where they like put like a suit and put like these Kevlar fibers in it. So as you get shot, but it hurts, but the bullet gets like compressed. So that's mm -hmm. why when he took his jacket off, all the bullets just fell out. He did get shot. It's just that there's Kevlar lined up in the suit. So on a real life practical thing, it actually is possible. But the thing is, what's kind of impossible is him catching a bullet with his forearm. How fast he's able to react to that. That's yeah. not real. But the actual Kevlar shit in the suit, that, that can happen. That's and the amount of bullets, thing. though. The the I'm, amount of I bullets mean, that it's stopping is like that's well, we're just the same place. Bullets. Yeah. I mean, if I, you're in the same place over and over again, I don't I don't think that's that's a problem. But if he's like all over the suit, I think that's cool. I'm more so it was more it's more so hard for me to believe this nigga jumped out a window, landed on a van and yeah. got up. Than it is for me to think that he has a Kevlar suit. If we yeah, don't, yeah. Do it, that was that was the end of three lead. actually, BG. Okay. When the uh, he when he shot him off the roof, and then the he homeless guy picks him up. He fell off the roof in this one too. When he no, jumped he off jumped, the building, he jumped out a window and landed on the on the van before he had to go on the van, like yeah. halfway on the van. Yeah. I will say this to speak on the suit. This is is is, is I cannot get the words out. This is exactly what this series needed to make it more fresh. Because if we got to John Wick four. It was it was a uh, double edged sword. I think this was necessary for the enemy type because, like I said in John Wick three, you got dung beetle bubble armor from head to toe niggas that I don't want to see you fight that for another three three hours. Having niggas in some suits where they can fight, they move, they quick or whatever they do in parkour and jumping and stuff, but it's still bulletproof. They freshened it up. It's a whole new look. John Wick four is the movie of the suits now. So to me that. Already gave it its own identity, but on but the issue is that I've known John Wick to be a headshot guy, and the only way to kill these niggas is with a headshot. But you're shooting at their arms and legs. That's well, I think he did, he did. I think he did that to disarm them and to like shock them, and then he'll because remember in the beginning of the movie when he was fighting the guys with the with the katanas and stuff, or the guys with the black suits and like the helmets, he yeah. like shoot them in the hand or like. Stun them and then lift their head up, helmet up, and shoot them through the head. No, oh, yeah, it's just that it just took multiple shots. I just think they had to up the ante because if, if he was always just getting headshots, it's too easy. This is what the movie did, though. In order to combat that, they made them do this with a with a blazer, right? Yeah, right here, right here. On top of that, um, he had the nunchuck. I honestly, I think it was a reason to make him do more ground game. John Wick's ground game in this movie was the best we've seen in all four, I yeah. think. He was like a grappler. I, right yeah. there, like yes, a, yeah. that he was, did some crazy, like, judo nigga, UFC his, shit. His ground game was better than Conor McGregor. Like, that nigga had his crotch on a nigga neck, came around, did a somersault backflip. I was like, what is this? This nigga getting freaky. He wiggling on his no, body. Yeah, he had to get uh, creative. Because he was like, yeah. he, they had everyone after him. He had, no, they had everyone. Like possible after, so he he couldn't just go through all my go and sign and scope this shit and just start smoking people in the head. No, he had he had to use everything in his arsenal. He had to use everything he ever learned. He definitely like showed it in the movie. Like this is I the John Wick they're talking about on John Wick one. Like that's that yeah. I will say though, BG, there was a moment with the suit that made me laugh. He uh he lifted his jacket up like in front of his face, and somebody sh uh, fired a shotgun and he blocked that shit with the jacket. 
I was like, what the fuck? Yeah. But uh, I was like, uh, you know, but I, I, I just wanted to know the rules when it came to this. Because I'm like, it, it, it's, it's just very like, all right, this is getting a little bit crazy where he's just like lifting up his arm and his, all these bullets are getting blocked. But I'm, I'm down for it. I just wanted to establish that we all know it's kind of crazy that this is this kind of shit is like being. I, I mean, he like, should be happening. in pain. He should, he yeah. should be in pain. Oh, that, should, yeah, that, should, that should hurt. Like, that nigga is bruised. His whole yeah. body is bruised. Yeah. Okay. All right. So movie pretty much starts out. Um, they go to the the hotel in Tokyo. Was it Tokyo? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's somewhere in Japan. Yeah. Somewhere in Japan. And it's his friend, uh, apparently a longtime friend, uh, Shimazu, who he's the owner of, uh, of that hotel. And, he, you know, so he's he's helping John hide out. But the uh, the marquee sent his goons to find him there. That's where we get, you know, the all the. Um, all of Shimazu's men fighting the Mar the Marquis men. So we get that crazy scene, some sword fights, a lot of gunplay. I really like the, the yeah. sword fights. Um, I actually wish we got a little bit more than that. Because I really, I really enjoy that choreography. Oh yeah, like especially the part with um the daughter when she yeah. was started when she we start, she started fighting. I oh, thought yeah, it was she really went good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she you went great. Was she the girl that played her, and I have forgot about this because I, I I I heard her name before, and I was like, "What do I know her name?" She's a singer. Um, I saw her perform somewhere like a couple years ago. She's a singer, and this is like her first movie role, like big movie role, and she did amazing in this movie. Like, mm -hmm. you'd have thought she'd been in this shit for years. I thought she was great in the movie. Yeah, I I really liked uh, you know seeing Shimazu fight Kane, and I'm a, with Kane oh, specifically. Fine. I was like. I was a little bit confused about his abilities because I, at first I thought he was almost like Daredevil, um, where he could just sense where people are at, regardless <clears> if they made yeah. if they made a sound or not. But then John was on the floor, not moving, and he didn't know he was alive mm -hmm. or 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 if he was alive or dead, or if he was he even dead there. John. Yeah, so you dead, John? Yeah. Remember that scene where he put the he put the motion sensors up too? I was just yeah. like, yeah. About to say that. Yeah. Ain't Kane is the definition of a nigga in the NBA who shot free throws all his life where he can close his eyes and shoot it because he knows what he should do. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm this far. I know I need to do this much on my jump shot. Yeah. That, Wonton, that scene where he put the uh, doorbells on the wall. Now, keep, I didn't watch no trailers for John Wick 4. When it comes to movies, I know yeah, I want to see, I don't watch no trailers. So, I, I didn't even know who this blind, this blind nigga was. I'm thinking, oh, I guess he the big baddie or whatever. When that nigga put them sensors on the wall... That's when I I got goosebumps. I almost stood up in the theater and like started clapping my ass. I'm like, nah, this dude is the truth. Being able to just and and his body language, it wasn't no Jamie Very Foxx, Ray Charles, like, like yeah. shaking his head. No, it was on some. You can tell that he's he hasn't been blind his whole life, and I think he portrayed that perfectly well. Remember, yeah. he said, "I gave my eyes for when they asked me what I'm willing to do for this, right?" Because the mm -hmm. dude, the dude had to cut his hand in the table and he pulled it out like yeah. that. To see what you want to sacrifice? That nigga gave his eyes, right? Him, that awkward, clunky, like, I'm feeling around, whatever. I might see you, and then the stylized, like, after he's done killing you, he'll tap you with the little sword cane. I thought that was yeah. so And his name fire. is a double meaning, obviously, because he's blind. Yes, and, bro, know, yes. That's, yeah. that's kind of on some um, Quentin Tarantino-type style, but I, I frequent it. I frequent it. You know, where it's all You know what I noticed, too? Or Kojima, you know, where it's so obvious so, that his name is Kane. Kane is played by Donnie Yen. Yep. I don't know if y'all seen Rogue One. He played a blind man in Rogue One. A blind dude. Well. Yeah, yeah. I saw that. It's I was going to say it in a movie. I was like, yeah, he he had kind of training and to do this before. But this one, you can tell, like, he wasn't like the Daredevil where he's not getting hit. Because he got, like, hit. But he was able to recover and, like, you know, take. And he was non lethal. At the beginning of the movie, he was trying to kill people. Like, I don't know if I realized it. Yeah. He didn't start killing people until the, the marquee was like, yo, we're really going to kill your daughter if you don't, you know. Yeah catch John Wick. So at the beginning of the movie, he was doing this and not killing nobody. Which showed yeah. you how dangerous he was. Like, he wasn't even taking people out. So, I thought it was a good touch to see how deadly he got as the movie went on. Yeah, because that he started to lose his patience. He started to realize, bro, I got, I can't get out of it. There was multiple yeah. times in the movie where he would tell the dude, I'm not doing it. Do it your own. Do it yourself. And he's just like, you know, your daughter, like, we got a visual on your daughter right now. And he's like, oh my god. You know, so he yeah. didn't want to be there, but fire. I, that Easily my favorite character in the whole movie. I'm sorry. Okay. That yeah, everybody's fire. favorite character. Okay, so Alex for you was Kane. Kane, bro. He he was the added element 
what to what I needed for this movie. Some extra character to root for, even though he was the anti-hero. Mm-hmm. Um, because we really weren't. He's trying to get rid of our main character, our main protagonist. But just every time he was on screen, I loved it. I loved it. Okay, uh, Tarek, favorite character, Mister Nobody. I thought really? in the beginning. You know why? Because when he got introduced in the movie, I'm like, John Wick's gonna off this dude in like 30 minutes, and then. <laughs> He lived there. He yo. He survived the whole thing, and I was like, yeah. but then he was like, not. I wasn't saying it's on the level of like Kane and John Wick, but he held his own. You like him? You like him because he looked like Kofi? Own. You like him because he looked like Kofi? They said, you know, they said that he looked like me. That's a, and Roy. <laughs> That's what they said. <laughs> he does like Roy. <laughs> so, what, but he when got he, Roy, he Roy, like Roy. Roy. yeah. But when he, him with the dog and using the dog to stun people and they hit him with the, that shot, whatever gun he had, that um, one shot. I don't know what that was. That was it the re- best weapon in that. It remind me bullshit. of a gun. Oh my god, what is that gun from? The repeater this- from Red Dead Redemption. The G three from like Call it, of Duty or something. It's it, where it reloads. Yeah, like it, that. it's kind of like that, but there's also like this this gun that like shoots like electric single fire rounds from some game. I can't remember what it is. But it reminded what me of that. The- no, it was it, it wasn't. Is it Killzone? Ah, it was. It wasn't kills. It's I don't remember what it is, but it's a no, rifle and a single shot, and it's like, yeah, it's, I don't remember. You're talking about the Wonder Waffle. Yeah. yeah, and that, it was. I thought his action scenes were really good with a dog, and they didn't overuse the dog. Like, you know how the dog was like, they could have killed John the dog. Wayne three, yeah. In John Wick three, the dogs were literally their own character. It was like entire segments where it's mm-hmm. like, like they got a whole fight scene or whatever. Yeah. Um, I do want to Tyrek to your character. I do. I will say this. He wasn't my favorite, and I'll give reasons why after Wonton and BG go. But I did like how they had him be this old Western trapper, tracker type guy. They were able to blend Western styles with the modern sense. The way he dressed looked like a cowboy. The guns he used, cowboy. Um, he had a revolver. The glove and the revolver. Everything about him felt old. He used the journal. like He used a literal journal where he's drawing locations in a world where it's digitized and i love that they kind of i don't know it's like he was uh attached to the old world rather than like coming up to speed with everybody else you know so i did i did enjoy that one time um, favorite, favorite character so for me um i like the nobody <clears throat> excuse me i like the nobody character a lot i thought he was a really cool addition but i'm with alex man kane kane stole the show bro i like donnie yen i don't know if y'all bro donnie yen is like He's almost 60, bro. He's been doing this for a long time. He he don't got no rust, no wear. He is he is like he's like I don't bro. He's he, to me, he's like the best in the game right now when it comes to the martial arts. Like <clears throat> and I remember watching when I was watching the movie, there would be moments where Kane is like he he's having this moment, he's fighting, and I'm just smiling at the screen, bro. Like I just had a smile on my face. I'm like, cause you gotta I, most people don't notice, like me growing up. I watched a lot of Jackie Chan, Jet Li movies. I grew up on shit like that. Is that why that's your profile picture right now? Nah, that's 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 some PSN shit. But okay. um, But yeah, man, just seeing Donnie Yen work, it's like, damn, bro. Like, I I wish we could still see Jet Li do stuff like Jet Li. Don't really. Mm -hmm. He's old. He's sick. You know what's crazy? Him and Jet Li the same age. I'm like, where? I'm like, bro. Where is Jet Li? Get Jet Li in some movies, man. I want to see this again. But but yeah, Kane Kane definitely was my favorite character. Yo, my favorite character. See. I'm tied between Kane and Killer, bro. Oh, that, fire, bro! That Scott Atkins, like I'm not that familiar with him, but Scott Atkins. Me, oh yeah, yeah, played. yeah, yeah Let me look up what he looks like outside of makeup. He, Hold up. Yeah, oh yeah, outside the fat He's suit ripped, and, and the makeup. He's it reminded me of like what's his name, um, as Penguin in the in the Batman. Oh, where, Colin, Colin, uh, yeah, yeah, Colin Farrell. Yeah. Where we we were like Colin Farrell as Penguin, and then they put the fat suit on him, and like he's like this funny. This funny penguin character, yo. This and and that scene at the table when they were p- playing poker was so good. Like, bam, that was it. It was, it was so well written, so good. Like, you know, oh, so tense because you want to. Everybody want to kill. Three of them mm-hmm. wanted to kill. You know, John and John wanted to kill him, and then and then he's literally fighting John, doing all these martial arts moves, looking bam. like while he's like three hundred pounds. And I think he's also like a stunt man and a martial artist or something like that. Also in real life, yeah, he is. He does. He's done. He's done stunts for for years and movies. Yeah. 
That so. whole club scene was fire mm -hmm. to the music, the lighting, the water. All of that reminded me of seafood. That's all I was thinking about mm -hmm. that whole fight scene. Oh, yeah, that level, yeah. Yes. But bro. They, had, they, had club, they had club levels in every, not levels, but club scenes in every mm -hmm. um, John Wick movie. And it's like, yo, this is the best one. And it's like, they had good club scenes in the first three. And I'm like, yo, this one picked that. I don't know. I don't know how they did this, but they made this one seem so much maroon. Like, I don't know. Maybe it's just dialogue they had and the back and forth and the way they are doing. Like, what's a Texas standoff? Where they had like three yeah. people with like pointing guns at each other. I think that's just, even though it's like cliche, I thought that shit was cool. Like, the way they I'm executed it was really cool. I'm going to tell you why. It was the use of lighting. With those deep mm -hmm. shadows, even when they had the bird eye and they had the fan just bringing that big shadow over to where he was doing it, sleight of hand with his with the cards. Yeah. Um, to the to the main story where it's just a big catwalk, a big waterfall. Second, I've been telling y'all the cheat code to making a movie feel bigger than life is making it dystopian. We see it in uh cyberpunk stuff. We saw it in Blade Runner. Anytime Tron, anytime you make something seem monolithic with concrete structures, low lighting, very bright blues, oranges, yellows, pinks, you immediately are transported in that sense. It's a cheat code. Yeah. And, and it, it was vertical. Well. It, yes. it wasn't BG, just on one level. Um, yep. Scott Atkins was in Day Shift too, BG. Oh, he was. Okay. Yeah. Well, I don't know who know, he plays. I ain't watched the movie, but y'all yeah. know I like Day Shift. Mean, yeah. I'm going to bring up the verticality again. A lot of these scenes weren't just on one floor. Like, you've mm -hmm. seen action scenes are just on this clear this corridor out. It looked like a corridor type of shooter. Like, he was going upstairs, downstairs, back upstairs. Like, we're going to get to the mm -hmm. stairs part later. But even that part, you know, was funny. He fell down the steps. He was doing that the whole movie. He wasn't just staying on one floor. Like I liked how they're able to like make the camera angles work and let's show a top angle, let's show angle from the bottom. Yeah. When he's fighting dudes on the floor, they had the cameras like I don't know how they like what type of technique they use, but I like the camera work because it was like it wasn't they didn't use a, they used a lot of cuts. It wasn't like a single cut, mm -hmm. which some people think. Oh, people always think oh good fight scenes are always a single cut. I don't think that. I think we're able to use the right cuts and able to edit it right. It can look good and. I feel like this is like some great editing. The way that the fights they switch from like angles, it didn't look like they're using a shaky cam or they're like cutting at the wrong time where you're losing out on action. It was just like they transitioned everything pretty well. Speaking speaking of the way that camera flows, a lot of times, did y'all ever see Midsommar? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Remember the scene where they fell off the cliff and they hit they hit face first onto the floor? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The reason why that scene was uncomfortable is because it felt too candid. It's the same way when you see, um, and not to be gruesome, but when you see a video on Twitter and somebody just jumps off the mall, third floor store, and it, you're just watching it and they just, you see that whole fall, that, that whole trajectory. Yeah. When you, when you see it like that, it, it, you lose that cinema aspect. Now it feels like you're seeing something you shouldn't see. So when they killed Killer, when he fell from that top floor and you just saw, you literally saw him fall that Crunch. distance and land on his yeah. neck and he picked him up and his neck was like this. Because he literally crushed his spine. Oh, yeah, that was crazy. Little stuff like that, they know that when we see it, we're going to be like, oh, we're going to be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I I just sat there and watched you fall 50 feet, nigga. Yeah, I saw that. There wasn't no jump cut. There wasn't no slow and let, I love when we see It's not the sound, too. Like, I watched it in a, I watched in a theater that had, it was XD cinema, yeah. so the sound system was pretty good. And mm -hmm. when I heard his neck crunch, I was like, damn, he's dead. I, would, I didn't even question he was dead. I'm like, bro, he's dead. Yeah. That's, his, that's his, whole neck, his whole neck is gone, bro. Bro, yeah. all the way from his ankles came on his neck at one time. Yeah. Bro, that nigga was gone. <laughs> that nigga was gone. I wanna love um, it. I wanna touch on because they, I think they can, they probably tie in together. Our favorite scenes and cinematography. Mm. I'm gonna tell you right off my favorite scene and was the dragon breath rounds when they were in that like abandoned oh, building. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I was like, I'm nah. Fire. I was like, this was fire. this. This is probably some some of the best shot scenes i have ever seen because you know of course it's just a regular angle then they shift the camera so it's top down it almost seems like a Not twin stick Miami. shooter yeah yeah it yeah. also seems like a top down twin stick shooter and you're watching it and you're seeing the impact of the dragon breath rounds hitting all these dudes and it's con and you see the contrast because it's dark in in that scene so you're yeah. all you're seeing is the dragon breath rounds hit these dudes and just light up and, and create like a lighting source, man. It that was amazing. Whoever like mm. thought of the idea and, to and make that, that top down, yeah. And and BG to build on that, 
we've seen video game influences in movies before that did not go well. Mm-hmm. What what made that go well is because we saw the blast of the bookcases, the debris. That's what made that more yeah. realistic or whatever. We've seen it done poorly in the Doom movie when it was first person view and you got the little gun like right on the ca- Remember Doom at the end of it yep. when they tried to call uh, an homage to the Doom games? Terribly done. You feel me? But that's yeah, their I goal too every time. Every time they try to do some video game influence, it's always the first person up yeah. close on the scope. And like it doesn't work like that because I'm not trying to look at the movie for the gun. A gun is a gun. Like I've seen that a hundred times in every movie. The way they did this, right. it was like, damn, even if you don't play video games, you know you've seen an arcade game like this when you were younger. So whatever age you were, if you don't play games, like that resonated with you somehow. So you've seen someone else who played a game like that, whether it was 20 years ago, you were a kid once, you went an arcade, even though you're not an avid gamer like that. You know what that is. That's reminiscent and, of every video game. Yeah. And if you're comfortable with, because I, I used to work with the theater department at my university, I would take photos for them. And it's all about the trick of what you're seeing from your point of view. In the audience, it looks like a whole world. But if you take 10 steps to the left and look through the side, you see how it's just cardboard, right? The way that they basically just kind of cut the roof off and allowed the camera to just free float above was genius to me. Because that way you see, you see, it's, it looked like you're looking at a map. Like you're looking at a map on the game. You just kind of follow them, go around killing people. Amazing technique. And bro. that's what I mean by like they don't take themselves too seriously. Yeah. Because you know what? Other people are like, you know what? That's going to break immersion. Da, 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 da. Mm. Nah, fuck that shit. We're going we're gonna to make this shit like, that's why I'm like, keep, keep that shit fresh. Because that didn't have to do that. They could have just shown a, a close up camera of him shooting people with a shotgun. Yeah. yeah. For them to even think about doing that and just implement, I hope we see it again in another movie, but we know people are going to copy this. It, it's going to be either good oh, or bad. Yeah, it's going to be like But that's going to be, that, that, that is like historic right there to me. Was that, your, was, that seen fav- this in was that your favorite scene as well? Oh, yeah. oh, yeah, for sure. That's the thing I was talking when I first was finishing the movie and I went to home base and I was typing. I wanted to spoil it. I'm like, yo, y'all gotta watch, y'all gotta, that's what I was like, y'all gotta watch this movie. Yeah. When I when seen that said, scene, I, yeah. I was like, y'all have to watch this movie. Got no like Red Peg and like everyone else mm-hmm. kind of wishy washy on it. And I was like, this movie was good up to that point. But when I watched that, I was like, nah, yeah. y'all gotta said, watch this shit today. When you said video game, I was like, I wonder what part are you talking about? Because you weren't trying to spoil it. As soon as I got to it, I was yeah. like, ah, okay, okay. Yeah, I was like, yeah, I was like, yeah, yeah this yeah, is, this is an true. excellent fusion. Yeah. One time, was that your favorite scene too? Um, I mean, I kind of have two. Definitely that scene, the top down and uh, the dragon breath rounds, but also um, when we first see Kane get to work when he's eating the ramen, and then uh, he's like, "Oh he's like, yes," he's, he's, he's like, "You, you want to help? You want to do something?" And he's, he puts down the ramen and he starts going crazy. Uh, uh, that shit was fire. BG, I actually have a picture of my favorite scene. Would you be able to pull this up and they see it on screen for you? Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna put the picture of my favorite scene in the. Uh, chat right now. I just got to scroll and find it. But while I'm trying to find it, I'll tell y'all what my worst, my most hated scenes of the movie were. Anytime the trapper told his dog nuts or car <laughs> or kill, I thought it was some of the most corny. I know this is like a far cry from what I've been praising this movie for, but having having him look at the screen and be like, nuts i hated that it's like he practiced <laughs> it's like he practiced that in the move like in the mirror like he was so happy his eyes was like nuts arm kill i hate it Ugh, you know what's so was, funny about that alex he anytime cringe. he did that the theater i was in and everybody left it's just and like and i know he, i know it's at the end of the movie when he did it when he when the dog bit his nuts and then he pissed on him the, the theater i was yeah, I, crazy i chuckled i allowed myself to chuckle but up until that point i was just like and I like it was like you shot my puppy to speak back to John Wick one when they mm. killed the dog. I was like, yeah, yeah, don't mess with the dogs. You feel me? Um, put some respect on some cats though while we at it. Um, I'll put the picture in the chat, BG. Okay, yeah, I'll add it. Real when quick. yeah, that that was a good scene. When I mean when, the scene where he uh, what's that shit called when um the trapper like so the guy he killed the first time he fell off the steps. Yeah, did the dog end up killing him again or did he get shot? Cut. I'm. Tr- I'm kind of losing what happened. You talking about the main dude with the the main the, the, the main henchman, yeah. The dude, they, the, the, cat. the dude with the bond side burns with the. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the I think the dog attacked him, but he shot him in the head, and then he, he shot like, him he after. Hit. Yeah, right. Oh, yeah, yeah, he, was like, okay. he, he was like, he was like, for some my reason, puppy. I thought he the dog killed him, and then yeah, he shot him in the head. Right, cool, that makes sense. Right. Yeah, the, the the movie uh, because I'm looking at um what Alex you sent me. The the movie had a lot of like I think this only this is not the only John movie that does this. A lot of neon themes. 
fam. Yeah, 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 a lot. When this scene, this was like in the first 20, 30 minutes. Like literally, this is when he got to uh to the uh, hotel. Right in Japan or <laughs> Tokyo, wherever it was. When he got there, he was just standing there by the tree, and I was like, nah, these niggas going crazy. Mm-hmm. And keep in mind, I'm a photographer by night. When I saw this photo, I went, nah, bro. Yeah. They they on a different level. If you look at just the way they frame this speaks to what one of my pros for this movie there are so many scenes where if you just stop and look at it nigga this is a comic book it's artwork like man. this yes yes this is what you want like as a poster this is what you want as a desktop background like the way they they really really took time to say how the styling of this shot and i really appreciate it this it was so hard it was so hard, I literally pulled my phone out real quick and took a picture. That's how hard this scene was to me. Oh, my God. Yeah, you got the, the cherry color. blossoms and then the neon <laughs> lights in the back, yeah. And then he's standing sideways. Fire. You're seeing it reflect off his face, yeah. Fire, bro. Yeah. I'm looking at yeah. cherry blossom out my window right now. <laughs> oh, yeah. my God. Yeah, yeah, and, you know, they didn't use a lot of, like, I liked how they use artificial light. Because you know what I hate what movies do? And I think they had someone red letter media talking to us the other day when they're trying to use too much natural lighting and it's mm-hmm. not bright enough. And in this movie, yeah. they use actual lighting. So we're watching a movie, you want to see what's going on. And I'm like, okay, great. Because a lot of the movies take place at night. Like a good portion of it took place at night. And I liked how they lit that scenes up. So you're able to see yeah. like the action, the muzzle flare, the guns, all that stuff. So the, the use of light, lighting in this movie yeah. was excellent. Like, it's yeah. the same way. I don't know if y'all saw the movie uh, Moonlight the where it was yeah. about right the same way that we gave them so much credit for having dark blue and purple lights on black skin and how it made it pop they did that with these white men <laughs> this pink light red mm. light orange they they knew what to do they knew their color compositions and they have to be applauded they got to win something at whatever award show it is they have to win something for the way they shot this and the colors crazy um, the, the, i would say the second most impressive scene might have been the, the the car scene with the roundabouts like i think fighting scene yeah yeah the roundabout about, that yes. was crazy that, he, bro, that, no, that, that headshot he pulled off that shit was when they flipped in the air he got him in yeah. the air when oh, they flipped off the thing oh, oh, yeah. 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 i was like i was like bro how are you shooting somebody who's doing 360s in the air after you got hit by a car you can't do Damn. that bro that man, is fire. He just got hit by a car. And he I think he landed three shots. He went for like the head, the body, and like yes. the leg. I was like, nah, you wildin', John. He bugging. Uh, bro. And one thing I loved, and it did it in that scene as well. I feel like I'm all over the place in my takes, but um, I really loved in this movie, they show that he's getting tired. Like, for instance, when he was fighting Kane with in the museum or whatever, when he was shooting the glass in the hotel, yeah. that was the first scene I noticed it. Um, of course, when he fell down to 200 steps, that scene, and there was another scene where he's legit, like, just on the floor breathing, because he's like, <sighs> like, you see him like, yeah, nigga, you've been doing this for four movies, you literally are at 100% con- concentration, shooting, being shot at, fighting, using your whole body, getting hit, you're not about to just go to the next scene, <laughs> you in the desert on a horse in a suit. Like, I <laughs> like seeing the realism of our protagonist, he's worn down, like, it's getting to him, we saw it in God of War, I got my opinions about that, but we saw it in God of War where he was just like, bro, yeah, I'm strong. Yeah, I can do it, but I'm... Like, come on. Like, th- there's no off and, button for me. And Keanu's not an emotive actor and, like, in the sense of, like, he doesn't go, go uh, you can't really tell he's, like, tired from his emotions, but the way his body language was, you can just tell he's like, bro, I'm done with this. I, I'm, I, yeah. This is it. I know when Keanu is tired in a, in a scene, when he start rudging and when he start running and he pigeon toed, when I start seeing mm. his feet kind of slop, I'm like, yeah, that nigga tired. <laughs> like that nigga, that nigga run like this with his feet. I'm like, yeah, he tired. And, and he wasn't even like frustrated. He was like, he was just like, he was like taking breaks. He was like on a phone. Yes. Like, you know, let me, let me take a break. We re- group myself. And the first movie, he was just, I'm on it. Like, nah, nonstop. Well, yeah, think of- you gotta think about it. that was it, bro. I just broke. I just took a. I took a sledgehammer and broke my guns out, nigga. I'm, there is yeah. no tired. I've been. I've been dormant, bro. It's game time, and I love that. Now that we're at chapter four, we see that, and I and I think that was. I think that was intentional. Yeah, that that whole car scene. That was like a. It was like a dance, damn near. Just all mm-hmm. the cars and the mo- some motorcycles and and the me- and the dude shooting. It was the dance, like a highly choreo, you know, choreography. And the dance. CGI. 
The CGI wasn't too bad either. Of course, when you watch enough movies, you're going to see, okay, that car is obviously made of Play-Doh. Like, that's not a real car. The CGI wasn't too bad. There was one or two vehicles where it kind of felt like, okay, I'm, I feel like I'm looking at a PS3 game. But it wasn't bad. It flowed well. You know? It, it, it didn't stay in the scene that long. That's yeah, it, like, yeah. They, they transitioned it out fast, so you're not like, damn, that shit's still staying in the state right there. It's like, they kind of got rid of it, so. Mm -hmm. And go just going back to the characters real quick i'm like yo i don't know how they're able to create characters that you love from just one movie like you know usually yeah they it, it takes multiple movies to create characters that people love this much like you you would swear you would swear that kane was in like since was in it since two or something the way people love him same thing with uh mr nobody i'm like yo in, in, in a two hour, it was like two and a half hours. But like, given the the amount of time each character was on screen, let's say like in, they each character had an hour. How do you make a likable character? You know what it is in an hour and a half. Like, and I think I'm gonna say this, and I want to hear Tyrek and Wonton's opinion on it. The same way that when Keanu Reeves says a line and he stares at the camera, and he's like, "Yeah," like when somebody just said a whole paragraph <laughs> to him, it's like, "Well, you didn't answer my question." The fact that they say so little, and that we and that if think about it. Why was Kane there? I don't want you to kill my daughter. Why is Keanu Reeves there? I don't want the whole world assassinating me. Why was the Trapper there? To introduce, not only are there assassins, there's an entire underside, under chapter of that, of trappers, motors, trackers, where all I, just pay me and I'll go find them. I ain't got to be the nigga to kill them all the time. I'll just go find people for you. They introduced a whole nother subset of assassinate, mm -hmm. uh, for assassin class. Um, so Kane was the introduced to another John Wick esque, where it's like, I'm retired, don't play, but now you got somebody I love. Um, he even said that in his showdown with the hotel in Tokyo, where he was just like, you know, I don't want to have to kill you, but you know, stuff like that. And I say that to say, the reason why we care so much about these characters is because we know what, how big of a Grim Reaper John Wick is. I'm going to call back to a line that Kane said. He said, John Wick don't, tr no, I lied. The other, what was the, uh, the other guy with the daughter? The, um, I don't want to, what was his name? He had the samurai sword at the hotel. He owned the Japanese hotel. Oh, oh uh, I just had it. I just said it. Damn. Said it. But y'all know who I'm talking about. Shimazu. Yeah. I think, yeah. Okay. The guy's always in every movie. Japanese. Shima, whatever. He was in Bullet Train too. That dude, right? Yeah. He Sonata. made a comment. It, yeah. it was either him or Kane. And he said, John Wick don't have many friends and he has even less people that he trusts his life with. And for the who we know John Wick to be, the Baba Yaga, mm. for him to have two, three, maybe four other people that he recognizes mm. as even though we could kill each other tomorrow, you're mm. my friend. When they sat in the church and he's like, it's good to it's good to sit with a friend. Having that dynamic, it makes you really care about these people because it's just like, hold up, who are you for John Wick to be okay with you? You see what I'm saying? And that's why I yeah, think that's why I think on the spot. Yes, yeah. I, I think because he's such a one-dimensional character, for him to have any emotion or motive aside for killing, the same way that the um the marquee was saying, like, you're only known to kill. You have nothing else to live for. Your whole purpose in life is to have a contract to kill somebody. The fact that he's has any dynamic layer helps the movie. It makes us care about like, well, who are y'all? Also, you see what I'm saying? I, I was shocked at like how many good quotes this movie had for a, for a movie that's you know on the surface just a dumb shoot 'em up like yep. when when he said uh um Koji he said uh well, friendship means little when it's convenient right that was that was a good <laughs> one also i think the marquee he said um he said how you do everything how you do anything is how you do everything i'm like that oh, that that makes yeah. sense he had another the friends, of line, the, the friends line when he was like friendship of convenience is it really friendship yeah yeah that's what, I said. Yeah. That, what was, that was the line the what was yeah. the line that marquis said that some men are judged by their failure or it was something like some men fail and basically he was saying like it's niggas like me who don't fail and it's niggas like you who fail and y'all got to make up for that in life i don't fail I, that was fire to me when he was talking to the continental owner yeah he yeah. said he said was, something about, I'm talking about yeah he said something about it's con failure is convenient or or second chances are convenient yes something second like chances are for the men that fail or something yeah. like that and I was just like, yeah, that's what yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. Like, that's a quote. The had good lines. Yeah, like for a villain, like he wasn't in the movie that much, but when he was on screen, he definitely like had his one liners. That he, he one of the best actors out to me too. I, I really like uh, mm -hmm. Bill Scars. Oh, Bill Scars. Yeah, we ain't even touched on the marquee yet. Uh, yeah, every time he was on suits. screen, he de he definitely made his um presence known. 
It wasn't like when the you bells know, in the background. Yeah. You know what it is, though? I feel like I learned, or not learned, but like picked up while watching these movies. The people that make these movies, the directors, the writers, they're just really good at making these characters cool, bro. Like, they know <laughs> they had Halle Berry and they had Halle Berry and John Wick 3 and they made her look fucking like she was killing people. She was doing her thing. Uh, Lance Reddick, uh, when he was the concierge, uh, Sharon, like, they just, Wait. it's like, when was the last just, movie? We... When was the last movie we even seen Halle Berry in an action flick? Was that Double O? Was time. that, ja- was that James Bond? Die Another Catwoman. Day? Catwoman. Yeah, die, die Another Day or Catwoman. One of those two. Or Gold and Member. They, yeah, and they, they, and they put her in the movie where she's doing these action sequences and you're like, I believe it. it it's not like yeah, jarring it's not right. at all. Yeah. For someone who's... They're just really in, good at, at making these people yeah. interesting and, and, and cool on screen. Um, because, that's why you know, the they're, not, look, they're not trying to make it like more than it's supposed to be. I don't... I mean, but it's like, they're not trying to, like, preach to you in these movies. So it's like they're they're able to lay these plot points out to make these characters, like, not say much, but still feel important because they're, they're, they're not trying to send this outer message about revenge or anything like that. Those rules, like they're ignoring that. They're just like, this is this guy's story, and this is how you want to tell it. And it's like it's linear. It's not like damn, we're not trying to like inspire Bro. like a think piece from this shit. John Wick, John Wick is the reason why we love Boss Rush games. the The fact that I can go in, I see a big baddie, I understand him in the first few move sets. I might die once or twice. I like that. Bo- the same way we like Returnal, Sifu, we fall in love with that because all we know is the combat and the foe. And everything we get from the foe in that battle sequence is why we love those games. And I feel like John Wick is essentially the boss, the boss rush movie in a sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the end goal of this movie ends up being that um, John he has to he get gets back into his family by doing a favor uh, for his mm-hmm. um, a, I guess adopted sister because he's you know been adopted into that assassin family um, to get a one v one with the with, with the marquee. And mm-hmm. I, yeah. and I also because I liked I liked how they introduced this new this you know this new thing this one v one battle and they have like the cards and I guess so you choose you choose like you know categories like you know what weapons mm-hmm. where it's gonna be and I think it's whoever got the higher card for that category that's how yeah. that's who who won it yeah the higher yeah, number yeah the higher that's number. He- I'm like, what? Like, who? That that's heat. You, know, like, you never play that. In, you never play that in real life. That's an actual card game. Yeah, it's like it's pretty much like war, I guess. But that war, yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. But I just, I'm just surprised. That's how, and it, it was like these cards that were kind of like st- almost stone tablets or something like that. It's like glass or something. Yeah, yeah. like glass tablets or whatever. Tiled or something. So I'm just surprised. I'm or I'm impressed by that. He was like pistols. What, yeah, that's the um, tradi- that's well, the he's... long running tradition that they came that they came up with. You know, yeah. that's been passed down but kind of forgotten. I was like, yeah, that's cool. I um, like that. I like that. Real quick, um, you know what's crazy that I actually read this article. Um, I came across. They said originally, uh, Keanu Reeves was supposed to have a lot more dialogue in this movie, uh, a lot more lines, a lot more speaking lines. Because I've seen some people complain. They say like. He barely talks. He's he's like a robot in this movie, but I think at least from the article I read, they said that was the decision they made, um, just because I guess they wanted to kind of show how focused John Wick was. I'm not sure, but mm-hmm. um, they basically said that Keanu Reeves and the director just had to strip away a lot of the dialogue. Uh, there, there's they do that so that when he has lines where it's like on oh, my tombstone, I wanted to say loving husband. That's so lines like that can hit. You feel me? If you got a whole movie yeah. of dialogue showing me how much of a loving husband you are, okay, I guess you're what not, you want to yeah, do. Yeah, you're not okay. exposition to, like, tell mm-hmm. what's happening. But and that's you, the thing, you already built this character up for four movies. Don't change how he is right. in the fourth movie, you know? And f- for you to have four movies of you going crazy to say, just say I'm a loving husband, and then you realize, well, this did start because you killed the the dog that his widow, <laughs> that his wife died, left him. <laughs> you but, realize, yeah, that nigga, that nigga loving husband. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, but I got I just, you know I want to touch on that real quick because the this all started from somebody killing his dog. I get it's I get it's the the dog that your wife left, you. but you don't yeah. you don't think about the fact that that is completely insane that you've gotten to this point all because you couldn't let it go that somebody killed you know the, I, it is dog. crazy bro. And it, I was because somebody pointed out it's like somebody pointed out it's a um 
it's like a sim it's like symbolism for how much white people love their dogs. <laughs> like they'll go they'll go through this this much just to avenge it. Somebody uh somebody actually told me this yesterday. I don't know if it was a reliable source, but that we were talking about in Telegram and he was like, Oh, did you hear about did you read that article about the director and Keanu Reeves? I was like, nah, what's up? He said apparently either the director or the writer used to be Keanu Reeves stuntman back in the day. The director. He was, the, yeah, he right. was. Right. So and essentially Keanu Reeves said um, the director said that I want a movie where the guy goes on a killing spree because you killed his dog. And Keanu Reeves says, I'll do it if you can find funding for it. I'll do it with you. If you if you direct it and you shoot it and all of that, I'll, I'll do it. If I'll do it for free or something that, like that. That's hilarious. So literally, as stupid as it sounds, is because his friend kept workshopping that story and nobody would pick it up. So Keanu Reeves said, I'll do it if you find the money for it. And that's mm -hmm. why, like, I feel like that's why it must seem so natural. Because he's one in one, hand in hand with a guy that was he, that he's known for years. I'm helping you do the movie, off the love type stuff. And I think that's yeah. I think that's heat. If that if if that story is true, that's what I read. That's no, it's true. It's true. He the director used to be a stunt double. Mm -hmm. uh, Can I say this though about yeah. the marquee? Mm -hmm. Y'all all saw the Matrix, the last recent one, right? Yeah. yeah. Terrible movie. Terrible Man. movie. My girl, my girl had never seen the Matrix movies. This was the first one she watched. Oh and God. I was like, I was like, babe, let's watch this one. It's on HBO Max. Let's watch this and then we'll go back and watch the other ones. Nigga, we were like 30, 40 minutes in, and she was like, is this like a kid's movie? Like, is this like a Disney movie? Or that's how cool that's how removed the Matrix, the new one was from its original film. For someone who's never seen it to think it was like a kitty corny movie, I'm like, this is a disgrace, like to the trilogy. Like, bro, this is not the the big stakes, the the action sequences, the the CGI, like all of this is not up to par. And I remember one of the one of the things I remember was Morpheus in that movie, right? The dude that played Candyman. Yeah, remember my, um, what's his what's name? His name? I, I, Yaya Abdul or some shit like that. Yeah. Something like that. One yeah. thing I loved, one thing I loved was his outfits. I feel like outfits in a movie go a long way costume dress it it tells you everything about that character right um i think this movie the marquee the way that nigga was dressed went perfectly with his dialogue his uh deposition his body language with his he, he had his hands in his pocket but his arms were just kind of halfway up with like maybe a few fingers in it everything about him was perfect and i and i'm only thinking of the matrix because that was the last movie keanu was in they missed the mark on that. The nigga outfits as Morpheus was crazy, like fashion level runway type outfits, and it just didn't translate. And I feel like they did that perfectly with this movie, with the with the one of the main characters. Every time you see him, it's a new suit, <laughs> fresh. I'm fresh with it. You know, everything clean cut. I think they did that perfectly, in my opinion. Okay, so let's let's talk about the ending, right? So um, obviously, this is a spoiler cast, so we can just talk about it. Uh, there's mm -hmm. a 1v1. Well, Kane is used as tribute by the Marquis, um, mm -hmm. you know, because he obviously isn't skilled enough probably to uh, have a duel with, with, with John, and Kane has to do it, you know, to protect his daughter and everything like that. And so they pretty much outsmart the, Mar the, outsmart the Marquis. They have, they have this duel. The first, I think the first two shots, you know, they land, they land it, like, I think mm -hmm. shoulder, stomach, no, nowhere... Nowhere completely lethal. I, I, and I figure they did this obviously on purpose because they had some yeah. kind of plan. At least John did. And and then uh Kane lands a somewhat not full yeah, I guess a somewhat lethal lethal blow on John. John doesn't fire. And then the Marquis, because he wants to finish John off, takes the gun from Kane. So now he's taking he's taking Kane's place now. Yeah. And and then John, you know, John fires the shot that he didn't fire the last round and, yeah. kills, and kills the marquee. Pretty, you mm. know, that, that's pretty witty, pretty smart. Um, and then, you know, John eventually dies, uh, you know, j dies on the stairs a little, a little bit after, after he's, you know, gained his freedom. He's gained his freedom, yeah. but then died. But what do y'all think about that scene where, you know, they outsmart him first? Well, for me, um, it kind of caught me off guard because I, I actually wasn't expecting that. The whole time I was watching it, <clears throat> I'm like, damn, like, how is he going to get out of this? Like, yeah, either John about to die or he's going to have to kill Kane. Bro. I'm like, this is like, that's that's what I was thinking. So it, when they when they did that and they outsmarted him, I was like, oh, shit. Like, it didn't even cross my mind. I they thought that was fire. fire. How they playing that? Um, he even says a quote to him. What did he say? Um, 
he said those who cling to death live and those who cling to life die yeah like right before he right before they faked the shot mm-hmm. you know, i feel like that was kind of like some code word type shit maybe um but yeah that caught me off guard it was it was it was fire yeah i like because i didn't know who to, i thought he shot his shot i just missed i didn't realize yeah, that he didn't shoot and then I was like, this is not how the movie's at. I'm like, if he's out of bullets, what is he going to do? Unless I thought um, Donnie Yen was going to just execute the guy from behind because he let him go. So at this point, he's a free man and his daughter is a free woman. So I'm like, oh, he's probably going to help John out. I wasn't expecting the bullets to still be in the chamber and him to like say that. But when the, um, I forgot the guy's name, the manager for the New York Hotel, well, you arrogant bastard, he didn't shoot his shot. I was like, oh shit. And then I was like, man, I, was, I thought it was a good twist. Like, yeah. Movies sometimes have a bad landing, and I thought this landed pretty well. Yeah, because John got his got the last shot in, and it wasn't somebody else that saved them. So I was okay with it. It was I thought it was a good send off. When I saw it, I thought uh, they had two hundred steps to talk about it. I thought that they're gonna get in and get out. Because keep in mind, they're friends. Mm-hmm. You feel me? So I definitely could see them. They're walking in together, hand in hand. I can definitely see them like how 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 you want to do it. Of course, they're not gonna do it. Yeah, they could have planned that shit not, when they was. Yeah, they want us to have a twist. Um, and then he comes to John Wick, says, "You okay? Thank you so much, you know." And he's like, "You owe me." So to me, I was like, "Oh, so y'all playing that? Think about it. It's John Wick, nigga. It's a blind man." That I thought it was more impressive that the blind dude could uphold his. If this is what it was, uphold his end of it and say, "I'm gonna shoot you where I know. I, I'm gonna shoot you where I know I should," which is a testament to how cool Kane was, but. That was a cool standoff, whatever. Personally, I told myself that John Wick heart stopped. I'm not believing that he died from that gut shot. I'm not I, this I, nigga, I, I, Just 20 minutes before, the nigga jumped out of a four-story building on a van and walked off. I'm not believing you got shot in your stomach and you, and you, and you, uh, no. I did, think he, faked, I did think he faked his death at first, but then when, you know, the scene after the cemetery, which, I mean, it's still possible, but I thought he faked his death at first, but now I, it's I think I think I Winston think... is the only person that knows, and he's just playing along with it. I think John yeah. faked his death. Because anyway, now that... your stomach, a lot of, there's a lot of blood vessels there, man. He might be dead. I think he might be dead. Fam, I think I, I, don't, think... Want him, I don't want him to be dead. If he's still alive, it's because I think that because he's free, He's not free. He's not under the reign of the table. Um, I think he wants the mythos of John Wick to die so that he could actually go and live his life. Exactly. Because think, think, think about it this way. Even if he's technically free from the table, right? Yeah. If people know he's still alive, anybody can still come after that nigga. And what are he going to do? Just not fight back? No. And, like, and because he's not from under the table, if I'm correct, and the way I'm thinking about it, he can't go into the hotels. He's no longer in that underground world. Right, because he's, all the hotels, free. all the hotels work under the table, mm-hmm. right? So if I'm yeah. if I'm nothing about me is tied to the table, that means I can't access your hotels. That I'm free from uh, the fear of getting shot, um, the guns, the cars, anything that my gold t- my gold token can get me. I'm not in your ecosystem anymore. So to right. me, that was the way to say anybody I've done wrong in the past. If y'all catch me on the street they can just blow me type paws, but they can just kill me. Yeah. You feel me? So I thought it was a way for him to say, let me go live my life type stuff. That's how I oh. see it. We're going to find out though. Yeah. So, um, there's, there's an after credit scene real quick, just to back up, um, the stair scene <laughs> where Fire. he fell down. He got all the way back up the stairs. He got all the way up the stairs, fell back down. Like, and it was so ridiculous and and and, and like comical. I'm like, only the, only in a John Wick movie, outside of a comedy movie, this can only you can only do this in in John Wick. And people in the theater be like, "Come on, man!" But like they're they're like mm-hmm. they're like not mad, but they're they're mad he he lost all that progress. Mm-hmm. Like it was yeah. a video game. Like he got reset yeah. to to the last checkpoint. So people were mad about that because you you. you for him though like in all the movies you feel there's a room for him and i feel like some action movies you're like yeah the good guy is gonna win of course but this one i'm like yo i want this dude to win mm-hmm. so on top of that people, yeah. on top of that every john wick movie there is no uncharted 3 where oh now i'm in saudi arabia we literally just watched you go from point a to point b 
So we just watched you go 200 steps, and now you fell all the way back down. So as a viewer, it's just like you're annoyed with him. You're just like, oh, my God. We got to cut. It feel like you got to go back up the stairs. And his facial expressions and him just looking yep. back, you're like, Fuck. And keep in mind, he, he it was he was a time constraint. He was trying to get there before sunrise, and they said two yeah. minutes was left. I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah, yeah. I, I still don't believe they got it back up the stairs in two minutes. But it was definitely. Oh. It, you know what it was, BG? It felt like uh, you know how in anime they be like they be they be having full dialogue sections and shit, and then they be like one minute passed. It's like nah. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's been like it's been like 15 minutes. <laughs> yeah, like trees, the trees are destroyed. The dynamic, and that's just yeah. five minutes. And then it was fine for like 20 episodes. You know. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so there is an after credit scene, and it's Kane going to see his daughter, who's a street performer, um, now that you know she's safe. But of course, it 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 connects back to Kane killing uh, um, Koji at the beginning, and his daughter wanting revenge. Oh revenge. yeah. So she's walking up to him. So I just want to ask y'all: Is that where y'all see the John Wick, I guess, series going from here, like spinoffs of 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 the other characters? If if I guess we believe John Wick actually is dead, or do y'all think there will be another John Wick movie? Well, well, it's in okay. your universe. Yeah, so there's a couple of things. One, I, I actually didn't see the post credits. I didn't know there was post credits, so mm-hmm. I didn't find out till later. But I do remember when he killed her father. He did tell. He, if you remember, he said, uh, "Come see me, see me." Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, come yeah. see me. So <clears throat> the only thing that I've seen that they have planned as far as the John Wick universe. They have a TV show based on the Continental, which is supposed to be showing like Winston when he was younger and starting up to run it. And then they have a, a movie coming out based on the ballerina from John Wick 3. Mm. Um, she's only in like one scene when we see her dancing on the stage. So her feet are um, like bloody, right? Or something. Yeah, but she's an assassin. They're making a movie about her. But the thing that I, that when you watch these movies, bro, and we talked about it earlier with the characters. They they have like a gold mine to the point where it's like they can pick and choose any of these characters and do any type of spinoff and it, it'll work. TV show, movie, whatever. Like they can do a, a Kane spinoff. They can do the Mister Nobody. They can do one with the killer before you know when he's running his club. There's so many like there's so many options they have um, with this. They world. got a whole lore, lore, right? right. And it, 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 they they have so many options and even to the point where. Uh, I don't know if you saw the trailer, BG. Before the movie started, there was a trailer for a movie called Sisu. Sisu? The, yeah. The nigga's like John Wick in World War II. Even yeah. that, bro, that shit is like that. That formula works, bro. That formula that they but have so many. They have... <clears throat> but th- that's, uh, for me, I would I don't want them to make any other movie without John Wick. Like, to me, that's what excites me about John Wick is that it's him. He's the nigga that even when he, even when Winston rubbed his tombstone or when the Rat King did it, he was like, I, I thought I'd never see the day. That's why I like John Wick, because it's like, no, no matter who it is on Earth, you know who that is. When you see his name, there ain't no question. There ain't nobody big and bad enough. You can't do nothing to him. And that's why I like John Wick. So, I, of course, I'll go watch it if they do, but I'd rather them not make another John Wick. If it's yeah, gonna be- it's like the Bourne movies. Like, remember Bourne? I don't know if I've seen There was like yeah. four Bourne, no, three Bourne movies. And then the Jeremy, Bourne Ren- Jeremy Renner. Yeah, yeah then Jeremy that Renner one. made one. And actually, I didn't like it. Uh, like and then they went back and made another one with Matt Damon, and that was good. So it's like you can't really make another John. Don't call it John Wick. I it think have to call it had to be like the the Tales of Walking Dead or some type of spinoff. Let's, like, yeah, I think I think it might do better as a spinoff TV series than a movie. Mm. Like you know, <clears> um, <throat> and, and not something super long. Like okay, we get to see what happens with. Uh, with Kane and 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 this woman, give us like I don't know, eight episodes. That even that might be too much. But you know, Think maybe on t- maybe on TV better. Yeah, than the budget movies. is what helps every John Wick movie feel bigger and better. What I hope they do with John Wick Four is make it like Kill Bill. Give me five. Remember in Kill, I was just about to say Kill Bill because remember Kill no, Bill, she was like, I... see me, she pulled a dog yeah, yeah. to see me. Yeah, about the black that... the black woman. Yeah, the, yeah. I was just about to bring That's it up. The... That's what that reminded me of, like it was a callback. What I hope it is, I hope John Wick, if, unless they go make another one, keep it for what it is, bro. Keep it for the chapter four, because the what made Kill Bill iconic, not only was the score and the outfits and the fight scenes, is because you have, what's it, three volumes? Or is it two? two. 
two, two volumes. Two. You got two volumes. This is the story. The the bride that didn't die. And she's essentially John Wick in her world. Like she's literally like, all right, I'm gonna just kill everybody that was supposed to, that was at my wedding or whatever that tried to kill me. I think they need to keep it to this. Keep it to this. You feel me? Unless they're gonna make another John Wick movie. Because if they start branching out to Trapper, Kane, the girl, XYZ, for me. It just, it just, in my opinion, is going gonna, gonna to cheapen it for me, bro. It's going to cheapen it. Because when I see yeah, John Wick, I, I want to see the Baba Yaga go crazy. I, that's Baba what Yaga. I want to see. The Baba that's why I, I, I like when they end stuff and they just say, you know what? Let it end. Because mm-hmm. you end the high note and then you're not sullying the name of the franchise. Because they can say... Yeah, but then, yeah, but then you get in situations like The Last of Us where they make a banger. But Last of Us only two games. The, and this on top of that, Every time they made a John Wick movie, it was because we was like, they, they can't over they can't do it bigger than that. Like anytime we saw John Wick one, two, three, well, y'all saw it in a different order than me. But every time you see, you're just like, how did they pull that off? John Wick as a character is only gonna get older. You feel me? We saw his age catch up to him in John Wick 4. You see what I'm saying? So it's only gonna get to where he 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 doesn't have that strength as he he even looks slimmer in this movie. Like he looks skinnier in this movie. I don't He's like know. a little more de- de- depressive, yeah. It's yeah, like, he, he it's looks like more... God of War, bro, with Kratos. It's like, yeah, eventually you got you got to send them all, bro. It's, yeah, mm-hmm. and, and they bring Kratos back for the next game. It's like, bro, we're gonna see this dude go through this not the same character arc, but he's brindled so much already. Let his character rest for like, I guess, in universe, the character just yeah. you don't want to do this no more. If in anything, universe. make a prequel. If anything, make a prequel. Yes, make a prequel I'd rather see to... him. Let's see what the impossible. Day. Let's see what the impossible task like. Let's see how did he become Baba Yaga if they're gonna do that. Mm-hmm. Because think about it. I'm glad you mentioned God of War. It John Wick Four tied all the way back to on my tombstone, lay me next to my wife, love loving husband. That literally tied it back to the first movie. The circle is complete. Let's not, you know, let's not make it worse than it is or try to do too much by trying to make more money. You see what I'm saying? A sequel could be a good idea. I'll be I mean a prequel. I could be down for yeah. that. They'd be like Red Dead too. There. Yeah. There's a lot there they could explore and explain and we could learn before. Yeah, I'm a, I'm actually not mad if that's the next move. Um I would love so, that. Yeah. So all right, y'all. Listen, final thoughts. Got any left? I'ma say two things. One, um, uh, and they kind of go to get hand in hand. The reason I love this movie so much, um, it takes me back to my childhood growing up on action movies and martial arts movies. But more than that, the video the video game influence in this movie is so apparent, and it's like throughout the entire movie. Um, it's not just that one scene with the top down shooting. There's so like even in the structure of the movie where, um, and they kind of do this in the other movies too. But like going to different locations, um, you know, when he goes back to the Roma Ruska and, and she tells him, "Okay, if you want to join the family, you need to kill this guy first. That felt like that felt like me playing a game, and they just gave me a side mission that I need to complete in order to get back to the main quest. Like that whole that I love just seeing that structure. How they uh, it felt like they pulled a lot from the video game influence. And um, I guess to add on to that, bro, I need a John Wick game like yesterday. Mm. I don't know who can make it. I don't know who should make it. We need a John Wick game. I'm talking about triple A. Uh, third person Max, shooter, Max Rockstar, yeah, Rockstar, <laughs> Rockstar, Remedy, whoever. We need to get a John Wick game ASAP. A- to be set. real, Naughty Dog might they they shoot mechanics like a charger two and four. I think they can pull it off. What, um, what, and- yeah, real quick, what I was gonna say, it, it's funny because it might because what you're afraid of is the is usually the, is the opposite situation happen, usually. It's video games being made into movies, and they end up and they turn up trash. In this situation, John Wick is so good, you're afraid of it being made into a a a a game, and the game ends up bad. So that's what you're afraid of. They got to go to a good studio, but it might it might already be in the works. We might we don't we don't know yet, but I I need that. I need a John Wick game. Like I need that. My father. On top of that, that's where we could see a prequel. It could be a John Wick game. That takes yeah. place beforehand, so that way it doesn't have to cover the movies. That could be an original option. story, and that way people are like, say, I already know the story, and it's not interesting to play because you know what happened. But yeah, my final thoughts are like, I've had to give this movie a rating out of 10, like a 9.5. Um, 
It's my movie of the year so far, even though we're only like four months in. I don't know how they top this, but I would like to see when someone try. Uh, if I had to recommend it, please watch this in the theater. It had like a good sound system. The yes. sound of this movie was like excellent. Like a lot of movies today, I think they they kind of skip on the sound and they go for like the visuals more. And then the sound quality is not up to snuff. But this one, they the gun sounds, the shotgun, even with the dragon, with the dragon shotgun. Oh, you yeah. hear like the the sound effect, the smoke, like the even just the visualness of the of the um, bullets, the people hitting the floor, the bodies hitting the floor, all that is like sounds amazing. They didn't skip on the sound. I think a lot of movies go eighty percent eighty eighty percent visuals, and then all right, we're gonna keep the sound whatever. Like you know, who cares a shit about it? But I like how they made the sound so visceral in, in this movie, and I hope more movies take from that because that's like it's like feeling the punches, like the kinetic energy like being transferred mm-hmm. throughout all the fights like that's a part of how like you enhances the visual aspect of the movies too because you're believing what you're seeing on screen if you can hear it and you can see it you're using two of your senses it's like they blend it together really well and you got movies like tenant where like i love tenant but that oh, sound yes. mix it was was fucking horrible because it's like i couldn't believe what i was doing was on screen just because the sound wasn't matching what i was seeing and the John Wick, the sound matched what I was seeing. And that's what I hope more movies go. I will buy this on Blu-ray. I only bought two movies on Blu-ray. The Lord of the Rings and Star Wars. And this will be the third collection. Whenever it was the, the four movie collection, I'm buying this on Ultra Blu-ray. Uh, real quick, I'll say this. Anytime a movie is two, three hours long, and I didn't even notice it and or wanted it, the story to keep going fire movie i felt this with babylon i felt this with interstellar i felt this with tenet um this movie crossed off any expectation i would have wanted from an action movie this movie exceeded it by far um yeah i i feel like if this was keanu reeves last movie i'd be proud of him and he's not a great actor (laughs) but i would be proud about what he did with this series because even if he only ever did john wick 4 and the Matrix, if those are the only two things he ever gave to Hollywood, that nigga's a two big ones. He, he's a goat in my eyes. Like you've attached yourself to two of the most influential. Maybe John Wick's not influential yet, but you've attached yourself to two iconic franchises. With by by saying twenty words a movie, that nigga's the goat. I'm sorry, and he drives motorcycles outside or when he's not working. So that nigga the goat to me. That's what I was thinking too when I was watching the movie. I'm like, bro, a- after this movie, you can say whatever you want about Keanu Reeves is his his uh his acting, his delivery, but when it comes to action movies, he's he's up there with the best of them at this point. He, and you he wouldn't is, you would expect him to be that. You wouldn't expect him to be that at all. You you reserve that for Bruce Lee, uh Jackie Chan, Jet yeah, Jet Lee. Like you you keep that for oh Tom Cruise, Brad Pitt. You say that for them. Keanu Reeves slowly walked in here with pigeon-toed feet talking about some, okay, I guess I'll do it. <laughs> like, bro, it's like, when you uh, think of gunplay, you think of Keanu Reeves now. Remember the gunplay yeah. in Matrix was like next level in 1999. Now it's like, yo, we think of gun movies, Keanu's the guy you go for, for guns. It's like with Bruce Lee and Jet Li, you go for, for fists. Or like someone you go for, for swords. You know how hard it is to distinguish yourself with a gun because everyone uses guns now? It's Bam. Like, yo, it's kind of crazy. You think of a gun, you think of Keanu Reeves. When we met up in Houston with Jack Move, we went to the gun range and he literally said, he showed us the John Wick gun. Like, literally, gun stores have it to where these are the guns that they have from the movie John Wick. But, yeah, that, that's pretty much my, my, my review take on the movie. Yeah. All right, boys. Um, appreciate it. I think this was a good spoiler cast. I think we ran down a, you know, and touched on a lot of things. Appreciate the movie, guys. To wreck. Um, all of you out there who subscribe to the Patreon tier to, to uh, listen to this early, we appreciate it. Um, everybody who's uh, going to listen on YouTube later, hit that like button. Appreciate y'all too. And um, yeah, we'll see y'all on the next movie review, whatever. I'm not, I'm not sure what the next uh, fire movie that's coming out that everybody plans to see, but we'll, we'll talk about it. The fire movie. Yeah. The Oppenheimer. Oh, yeah, I'm definitely <laughs> seeing all of those. All right, so we'll catch y'all next time. We out. Peace. All right.